Hey everybody, I'm Cheryl Fox, also known as the Carb Addiction RD. I work for Dr. Sivas, the Carb Addiction Doc, as his dietitian, and so you may well surmise that means that I am also a proponent of the low-carb way of living. Now this, of course, distinguishes me from many of the mainstream dietitians that you might come across, but another way that I'm different is that way before I thought about becoming a dietitian, I was a biochemist. What that means is that now, when I hear some dietary recommendations, I really need to think about it. I want to understand the mechanism of how and why a particular thing, whether it be something that our own body produces in response to an external source, or whether it's something we ingest, I want to understand what the effect is, the, what chemical pathways are impacted. One of my passions is to really do a deep dive into these nutrition topics and bring you the best information I can. Now, I'm not providing medical advice in this video or in any other video, but I do hope that the information I provide you makes you question those recommendations and really think deeply about what makes the most sense for you for your own health and wellness. Now, I get asked a lot about supplements, and in my practice, although there are, is a time and a place for certain supplements to support a person's health, I do believe that we should really try and get most of our dietary needs from our own food, and so that's what I strive to do in my practice, but I will recommend a supplement when the time and place is right for a certain person. Um, but one of the supplements that's come up a lot recently in conversation is collagen. I mean, people are slathering it on their faces to get rid of wrinkles, and they're throwing it in their coffee and their protein smoothies in order to reduce joint pain. So I decided today to address collagen for you to provide you with the best information that you can to decide whether or not a collagen supplement, supplement is the right thing for you. Okay, so first of all, what is collagen? Well, it's a protein. In fact, it's the most abundant protein in all mammals. And of course, as humans, we're mammals too. Um, about one third of the total protein in your body is collagen. It's a major structural protein. It's literally the glue that holds us together. Um, it's made in specialized cells called fibroblasts. And depending on the amount of mineralization, that is the density of minerals within that matrix of collagen, um, it forms our bones, skin, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. And just as a little side note, uh, I want to mention that there is no such thing as plant-based collagen. It has to come from animals. When you consume protein, whether it be meat, collagen, or even plant-based, your gut will digest that protein into the constituent amino acids which are absorbed, then used by your body to create the proteins that you need. There's some disagreement, but generally we think of there being 20 amino acids, with 9 being what we call essential amino acids. They're called essential because we can't make them ourselves, or can't make enough of them for our needs, so we have to get them from our food. A protein source that has all 20 amino acids is called a complete protein, and one that doesn't is called an incomplete protein. Collagen contains 19 of those 20 amino acids, but is missing the essential amino acid tryptophan. So you can't rely on collagen as your only protein source. Animal sources such as muscle meat, fish, eggs, and cheese provide complete proteins. I'm sure that you are all familiar with the double helix structure of DNA. Well, collagen forms as a triple helix. Each strand is a connected string of amino acids consisting of a repeated sequence of glycine, X, and Y, where X and Y can be any amino acid, but are most often proline and lysine. Glycine is the smallest of all the amino acids, and its high presence permits a very tight coiling of the triple helix, providing collagen great strength. The proline and lysine residues undergo a reaction called hydroxylation, which creates structural stability. This reaction requires vitamin C as a cofactor, so a deficiency in vitamin C will lead to poor collagen formation. Without adequate collagen, the result can be symptoms of scurvy like poor wound healing, parafollicular hemorrhage, gum disease, weakness, and pain. Smokers and alcoholics have greater vitamin C needs. Smokers, it's hypothesized, need more vitamin C because of increased oxidative stress, and alcoholics may often be generally malnourished. As I have discussed in a recent video, those who consume high-carb diets may also have a subclinical vitamin C deficiency.
This means that while they may not have overt symptoms of scurvy, they are probably not achieving optimal collagen formation. There are 28 different types of collagen. The four most common are type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. Type 1 is the most common type, and it is flexible, strong, and provides resistance to force, tension, and stretch. It's found in all connective tissue, notable scar tissue, tendons, ligaments, bone, cornea, skin, and dentin. Type 2 provides resistance to pressure, is found in articular and hyaline cartridge of joints, and intervertebral discs. Type 3 provides a flexible meshwork for cellular support, is the main component of reticular fibers, and is often found in organs such as skin and blood vessels. It's also abundant during the early stages of wound healing and plays a role in granulation tissue formation. Type 4 creates a meshwork that provides support and attachment to the underlying extracellular matrix and forms the basal lamina of the basement membrane, an essential component of the kidneys, inner ear, and lens of the eye. Sorry guys, I know that was a bit technical, but it just goes to show you how many ways we use collagen in our bodies and how badly things can go wrong if we're not making enough. All of these applications of collagen make it useful in the medical field, and in that field they typically tend to use sourced collagen from cows because it most closely resembles human collagen, so there's pretty good um, tolerance of that product. Um, in medicine, collagen is used for bone grafts, tissue regeneration, reconstructive surgery, and wound healing. But back to supplements. As we age, it's true that our collagen production becomes less structurally sound. Some estimates suggest that collagen production decreases by 1 to 2 percent beginning at the age of 25. And this degradation speeds up if you are exposed to pollution, smoke, drink alcohol to excess, consume a lot of sugar, or overdo sun exposure. In addition, it has been demonstrated that eleva elevated levels of cortisol promote the degradation of collagen. As we age, the collagen in the deep layers of our skin change from a tightly organized network of fibers to an unorganized maze, and the fibers themselves have a reduced thickness and strength, leading to those wrinkles on the skin's surface. It's the reduced synthesis of specifically types 1 and 3 that are characteristic of chronologically aged skin. In fact, Varani et al. found that type 1 collagen content, a marker of ongoing collagen synthesis, was decreased by 68% in old skin versus young skin. According to Google Trends, internet searches for collagen have steadily increased over the last 10 years. We're all searching for that fountain of youth, fewer wrinkles and less joint pain. You might be interested to know that collagen supplements typically consist of those types 1 and 3 collagen. Awesome, you say. Let's start. But wait a minute. Let's look at the research. Now, to be fair, I did do an exhaustive PubMed search for clinical trials with collagen supplements, but my quick search did not find many human studies, although some randomized controlled trials have found that collagen supplements improve skin elasticity. There are more mixed results in trials examining whether collagen supplementation can improve joint mobility and decrease joint pain. But what I did find was that frequently the supplement companies paid for the research, and in the joint study shown here, the researchers were even paid a consulting fee by the supplement company. Now, I'm not here to impugn reputations, but I am skeptical when financial interests are entwined into research and I could find no reliable evidence to suggest that orally digested collagen becomes preferentially localized to the skin or the joints, as opposed to just being used anywhere else in the body. It has been argued that the amino acids required for collagen synthesis can be consumed from a normal protein diet, which of course negates the need for additional collagen supplementation. Unless you are not getting enough total protein, but even then, I would encourage you to find a complete source rather than rely on collagen. Wow, that all sounds so negative. But the truth is, I actually consume a lot of collagen, but not as a supplement. I really enjoy eating the tougher cuts of meat that are collagen rich. Um, I 
tenderize them using sous vide or I braise them low and slow. Every bone in my house gets turned into gelatinous broth. We use this as a rich sauce base. There's no need to thicken it with flour because it's already so thick on its own, which of course is great for those of us trying to eliminate grains from our diets. And let me tell you, a warm cup of bone broth is the most delicious way ever to break an extended fast. Just think about how mom's homemade broth made you feel when you uh, were sick. It's literally my comfort food. So while I can't discount the benefits that some people feel from supplementing collagen, I'm not convinced the science backs it up. However, there's no harm as long as you make sure to get other complete protein sources. And in any case, collagen consumption is secondary to leading a healthy lifestyle where you don't smoke, only consume alcohol in moderation if you have tight boundaries, and keep sugar, sugar consumption to a minimum. Eat plenty of those complete proteins and ensure that you are not vitamin C deficient. These are the things that you can do to promote your own collagen production the best that you can. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you found this helpful.